Hello and welcome to Good Shepherd Lutheran Church here in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Vicar Steele. It's great to have us with you today. Our devotion for today is from St. Paul's Epistle to the Philippians, chapter 1. In particular, we'll be taking a look at verses 6 as well as 9 through 11. Our text says, I am sure of this that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. The epistle lessons are often chosen to reflect a certain practical day-to-day reality and implementation of the previous readings, especially the gospel. This Sunday, we've heard a lot about forgiveness. With the Lord, there is forgiveness. Jesus, how many times should I forgive my brother? Seven times? No, I say Seventy times seven. All about forgiveness. And then we have this reading. What does it mean for you, the Christian, today? Well, what is the good work that God has begun in you? It is the work. It is the life of faith. Faith which the Holy Spirit has given to you through the word preached into your ear and into your heart, faith that grasps on to the work of Jesus, the forgiveness that he has won by his life, death, and resurrection, forgiveness that is for you today, tomorrow, and forever. This life of faith which God has begun in you, will come to completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ when he returns. And although in between we sometimes struggle and falter and stumble in this life of faith, with the Lord there is forgiveness. He has promised you. He will bring it to completion. He will bring it to perfection. And so, when you do stumble and you do fall, when you sin, turn to God who has promised to keep you in the shelter of his hands, in the shelter of his love, and ask for forgiveness. For the Lord is willing and ready to ever forgive you for the sake of Jesus Christ. And so, as you continue on in this, your life of faith, it is St. Paul's prayer. It is my prayer, but most importantly, it is the prayer and the desire of God the Holy Spirit that you would grow in love and that you would grow in goodness, in what is pure, and what is blameless, and what is excellent. Moving on from the sinful things of this world that so drag you down towards the goal, towards the end, in Jesus Christ. Faith in Jesus, his blood shed for you, covers over a multitude of sins. And the Holy Spirit, who has begun this work in you, will carry it on and will strengthen you and will grow you in your faith and mature you until at last, either when you fall asleep in the Lord and awake in heaven, or at the glorious day of his coming, it will be perfected the life of forgiveness, the life of a Christian continues on today 
and tomorrow and forever. The life of faith, of forgiveness, is for you always and forever in the Lord Jesus, whom God has given to you as your Savior and through the Holy Spirit promises that your life of faith will endure and continue until at last it is completed and you are perfect and you shall live forever with the Lord Jesus. Do not abandon this hope. Cling to the forgiveness of sins. Cling to the promise that you are God's forever and ever. Know that the Holy Spirit is with you, will strengthen and preserve you unto life everlasting. Amen. Christian Church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To, ra to, to raise those who fall, and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good to give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, 
to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayer. We implore you to Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, takes away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, according to our sins. Do not reward us according to our iniquities. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you desire not the death of a sinner, but rather that we should turn from our evil ways and live. Graciously spare us those punishments which we by our sins have deserved, and grant us always to serve you in holiness and pureness of living. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.